Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people like to welcome you all to the show. Uh, we're getting ready to tackle a, si- a situation that took place in the early 1800s, and we had our Willie Lynch from the Caribbeans to the Americas, but New Zealand, South Africa, and Australia had their version of Willie Lynch, and his name was Sir George Gray, right? And we finna get into that, but before we get into that, I like to say, look, black people, Moorish people, aswads, melanated people, there is no one geographical location that encompasses all melanated people. You get what I'm saying? Meaning like uh, black people in America or Moorish people in America or Aswads in America or melanated people in America we're not the in all to be all when it comes to who's considered quote unquote black. Right? And this comes uh, in regards to uh, Kamala Harris, right, who has just been tapped as a, uh, a, a vice president running mate with Joe Biden. Okay, let me explain what I'm saying by that. She, Indian people in India, they have melanin. Now, I don't like the caste system that they have where they treat the uh, darker skinned people uh, less than, but that's all over the planet. Right now, did that derive from the caste system? Because you got to remember, the Indians were colonized by the British. So, if they adopt their way, we're gonna get into that as well. But the point I'm making is that whether you in Haiti, whether you in North Africa, Egypt, whether you in Mexico. Uh, the Caribbeans or the Americas, if you have that melanin in your skin, then you are considered black. So when people ask the question, well, is Kamala Harris black? She got, look at it. You don't see the melanin? Where you think it came from? It came from that same substance, that same material um, that the universe created man up out of melanin is the oldest substance known to man it's really the origin of life you know so if you have that in you yes you are considered black now you saying you're not black american you're not african-american okay well well are you saying that the uh south africans they're not black uh the the kenyans are you saying the north africans are you saying the, the Haitians? Are you saying the black Brits? The black Irish? I mean, what? The black Chinese? Uh, don't let these uh, geographic, geographical sections on the planet divide us. Basically is what I'm saying. That's not good at all, right? But we want to get into um, how it happened in what took place around the world because it was the same playbook. Matter of fact, we'll do this right now before we get into uh, the topic. Okay. Whether it was New Zealand, right? Whether it was South Africa and Africa, whether it was the Americas, whether it was the Caribbeans, whether it was Spain, same playbook. What happened? The European, especially in New Zealand, same thing. The, the Europeans came in New Zealand, right? Mixed their blood with the uh, Maori people, right? And then the offspring from that, they they put them on top of the um, the original Maori, meaning meaning before the admixture or before they were sleeping with the. European Caucasians and that the seed that they had from that that union, they put that seed, that union on top 
and then push the, the darker mores to the back, to the background, and the 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 seed from that union, uh, they ruled over the the original native Maori people, right? And then what happened after that? The only thing after that that the native Maoris could do in New Zealand was either entertainment or sports, right? That that was that was that that is what happened because what happened was. The union between the Europeans and the Maori people, that offspring had lineage, had a heritage rights. So he was able, he or she was able to hand over land and rights to the rest of the Europeans because they're saying, hey, you got part of us in you too. We'll take this portion of the land, right? We just, just give us this section, right? Just give us this section of New Zealand. We don't want everything. It's just, just this section. And over time, they began to take more, take more, till they pushed the original inhabitants into a corner and, you know, changed their religion, changed the, the education, changed the culture, and now they can't seem to get a foothold to uh, climb back uh, to their original uh, position. Okay. Happen here in the Americas, right? You know, uh, to where at one point uh, now the, the 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 when the European Spaniards mixed in with the natives in America, they put the the lighter version over the uh, originals that was already here, and then that offspring. Uh, let the Europeans come in and show them everything, show them around. And eventually they started taking land, changing the educational system, changing the religion, changing the culture until in America, uh, the number one economy for the original inhabitants, black people in America is entertainment and sports. They did that dichotomy all over the planet. And and it still is st- standing today. Um, how do we change that? Well, first you gotta get an understanding on the the plot that they used, and and as uh, Credo Mutwa was saying, uh, damn, you know, after all the atrocities that was inflicted on black people around the world, they still would not let go of that white Jesus in that cross. He talked about how in King Leopold, they was cutting arms off of these people, man, trying to get the rubble from these trees. And after all that atrocity that took place, the native people still was into that white Jesus and that Christianity. He couldn't understand the power behind it and why the people couldn't shake it right. So I want to get into something uh, dealing with, uh, we'll go back right here, right? We'll go back, we'll go back here. We'll start right here and I'm going I'm to read some for you guys and it's going to be a minute, but I got to, I have to do this and this is uh, coming from South African uh, History Organization, right, on what took place, right? Because I want to show you um, the similarities of what took place in South Africa after it took place here with the blacks in America, right? Now, after the 1850s, European culture began to be accepted, right? This is in Africa. The government promoted education because it was seen as a means of pacification and incorporation into colonial society. So the trades coming to Africa, right? Trade routes, trade posts being set up. A European model of making money is being set up, although they got that from the Moors. And then the Europeans ran and took that all over the world. But black folks taught them this system, right? The newly opened hospital in King Williamstown treated whites and blacks identically, and schools for blacks were founded and sponsored. Lovedale School became the best known. Evangelism was encouraged, 
and converts settled themselves around mission stations with their associate industrial schools. These provided instructions in carpentry, right? You know what Malcolm told you about that. You know, you don't don't worry about being a lawyer or, or, or a doctor. Malcolm, you're good with your hands. Why don't you get into carpentry, right? Because they're changing the, the, the dynamics. They're changing the, the economy of how things were, right? Wagon making and smithing, you know. You was a blacksmith. All these hand to they given to the Africans. Now when 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 Africans in in in, in uh, cosmology, uh astronomy, um uh, mathematic science, the teachings of the the gods was what the tribes was into with their saying, let's let's take your focus off of spiritual reality that you've been practicing for years, and we're gonna show you how to do this woodwork, right? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put you on materialism. We're gonna take you off of spiritualism. We're getting ready to put you into materialism, right? We're gonna get into that too. No, we get into that now before I forget. Now, see, one thing you have to remember is that within our Akashic records, we're able to go back. Uh, to trace our um, ancestors uh, to previous generations, right? But Christianity only goes back so far. So if you focus on Constantine's Christianity, you limit yourself into how far you can go back and pull and bring what you pull forward. You know, you only go back so far under the guise of Christianity because as Solomon stated there's nothing new under the sun meaning within your original uh, religion uh, whether it be Islam or uh, whether it be Vudan or whatnot, you can go back uh, to a time that was similar and see how the problem was solved and build from that and use that in today's time. But you can't do it in Christianity. It's too new. It's, it's not happening, right? Okay. So, look. So, um, wagon making and smithing often offer a high standard of academic education. A high standard of academic education. Some southern tribes... Uh, changed radically in the manner of life they led, right? Especially the Mufingu, which is M F E N G U, the Gwakwebe, which is G Q U N U K W E B E, and refugees who saw it as the door to a new society. They accepted education enthusiastically. They adopted Western dress and customs and began practicing in the uh, market-related economy as land tenants or sharecroppers. Give, they, they, you love them, they, they gave them nothing. Same thing in America, you know, land tenants or sharecroppers. That's what, and, and they ran the hustle on the blacks in America with that sharecropping. But, but what I'm saying is that was a tool that was used all over the planet. So it wasn't, it, it wasn't specifically uh, just blacks in America, but blacks in America have a right to voice their grievances on the horrendous treatment that happened to them in this, on this continent. You know, we can't argue or we meaning we can't black people in America can't go to Africa and file up uh, a, a, a file a petition against the horrible acts that have on behalf of the African people and their magistrate and their judicial and their justice system. Right. Can't do that. We can only do that here. That's another thing. Before we go even further with the Nick Cannon situation. Right. See, what Jewish people have to realize is that our only redress is um, the court systems, right? 
But we have mm-hmm. to do the research and find out who did what, who financed what to bring that to the uh, court system. Not just for economic uh, reasons or reparations or, or things of that nature. No, we have to do that so history don't repeat itself. And we got to point out all the players and who played an active role so we can make sure it won't repeat itself because uh, that's the only thing that we have to... Um, uh, to address situations to make sure that they don't happen again, we have to file it in the courts, and and we have to put we have to uh, put we have to put documented. We don't have a choice because if we don't, then we'll create or the, the or no, why not? We will create, but the atmosphere for slavery will create itself if we don't say, hey, wait. Uh, this organization, this group of people uh, did this. This group of people did this. This group of people did this. Because since slavery was so horrific and horrendous, we have to point out all the wrongs that was done to us to make sure it never happens again. It's not personal. Right? But we have to do that in order to make sure uh, the situation don't uh, uh, occur again. Hope y'all get what I'm saying. So when we say, hey, uh, they had a book, Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, right? Uh, Nation of Islam put out. And it wasn't it wasn't the Nation of Islam scholarship. It was rabbis that they interviewed who admitted to doing so-and-so. And they put it out there for people to learn to make sure these situations never occur again. And a lot of people got upset but you have to realize our position, position of black people in America is we got to point it out in case we have to go to court to make sure it's on the books to make sure it doesn't happen again. Because we can point it out and say, hey, wait, whoa, this happened. This, you know, took place. And this is why this happened, because you did this. And we don't want to we want to make sure this never happens again. That's all. So I don't take it personal. Now, look, however, the EXO, which is X-H-O-S-A. Zosa, the Zoksa, saw education as an attack on their culture, right? Now, this is what happens then. We have this today. You got the conscious community, right? And who will say, well, we researched we, and we know what took place and what went wrong. And we're not going down that road again, right? But then you have another group of black folks who saying, well, look, up under this uh, white Jesus and this cross, and the, the, the Christianity that the slave master brought to us, uh, we holding on to that because through that we were able to get a church, 501c3. We got a choir. This is what our parents knew. This is what our grandparents knew. This is what their parents knew. And we not letting it go. Hey, uh, you, you, get with to, you get with today's times and stop going back uh, with all that black talk, right? It's the same thing. Fearing the loss of their identity, right? Just like the, the, the country community, they fear and fear loss of identity. So the stories have to be told to teach the youth. Fearing the loss of their identity and custom, they wish to retain their traditional societies intact under the chief's power. They were so keen to retain their traditions that sometimes they took aggressive actions against those who tried to attend the mission schools, right? You trying to go to the, we going to get in the way. Consequently, the marked cleavage that already existed between the Xoxa traditionalists who scorned the missionaries as breakers of ancestral customs, meaning that they was already a cleavage is a split. They was already split, Right. Divide and conquer, they take advantage of that split underhandedly, right? Because they knew uh, how to create the split. They always create the split. They get one tribe guns, and they won't get the other tribe guns, right? And then they'll create a, a, a conflict between them. Then the one tribe with the guns use those tribes on the ones uh, without the guns and kill up a, a, a bunch of them. And now that tribe is very upset. Then they'll take the guns away from the ones who previously had the guns and give them to the tribe that didn't have the guns. And they say, boy, when they get ready to get revenge, they finna take, they coming after y'all, but they sitting behind, they sitting in the shadows laughing, watching it all go down. They doing this right now in America with the gangs, but let's keep going. Right. 
between the Xoxa traditionalists who scorned the missionaries as breakers of ancestral customs and the Christians was uh, exacerbated. The governor appointed magistrates to assist chiefs and a monthly salary was offered to them for their services in court. Though Sandow argued that his authority was undermined, perhaps because of the monetary advantage, many chiefs agreed to the system. Because of the monetary advantage, many chiefs agree, you know, give them a little, you know, grease their palms a little bit, man. You know, because why? Grease their palms because, look here, man. We'll give you a, a mirror and we'll give you some uh, a, a silver necklace. That way you can be unique and you can strut around the rest of the tribe so they can look up to you and say, hey, look, I got this mirror. You don't. And I got me a, 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 a necklace that they gave me. It's part of the game, right? Fail for it again. You know, it's like like in the hood, okay. You got Jordan's on, they don't. Everybody, oh man, I like those so and so man, you the man. And you know, you 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 on high because you spent your last on it. Somebody come step on them or try to take them, you gotta shoot them because I mean, hey man, this gave me identity. This gave me praise. You know, people dapping me up. You know what I'm saying? It is going down. Anyway. Gray encouraged the commencement of the first railway at the Cape, gave large sums towards the founding of Gray's College at uh, Bloom for Bloomfontein and erected hospitals for the indigenous inhabitants to combat the influence of witch doctors. Right. So what they doing was, look, we're going to break all your traditional ways. Right. And we're going we're going to bring this new way into you because. You know, we got to come in this way because how else we going to conquer over you and we'll give your leaders a little change and they're going to say, yeah, the Xoxa national suicide took place in 1856. Faced with the rapid disintegration of their traditional society, the, the Xoxa turned to the supernatural, believing a prophecy that if they refrain from s- sowing and if they kill all their cattle, the whites would be driven into the sea. Now, look, white folks came. These people wanted them white folks off their land. It's like it's like it's like it's like everywhere else on the planet. They come bearing gifts. They come with a smile. But then after a while, everybody like, man, please go back to Europe. Go back to where you came from. Right. These people wanted them to go back so bad. Right. That they kill all their cattle. They thought that the whites would be driven into the sea. This great cattle killing initiated a devastating famine in 1857 that cost the lives of some 30,000 people and caused about 29,000 destitute Zosas to seek work in the colony. Right. Kill off all their cattle. Didn't have anything to eat. A bunch of them died from famine and they had to turn around and go back and ask for jobs where they was colonized, just like black folk in, in America, right? You didn't didn't teach us how to read or write. Then said, okay, you free. Got out there, no skills, no read or write, had to come back and do sharecropping work. It's, wow. All this has to be brought out. In the Transky preparation for future land annexation began in 1856 when an expedition was sent out to subjugate Chief Sir Hilly, who fled across the Bashi River. The central government had established effective authority by 1858. Once the Zexo chiefs lost their power, this is Willie, this is their modern day Willie Lynch, Gray was able to settle the depopulated areas with white colonists, right? So they waited around. Chiefs lost their power. Then uh, Sir George Gray brought more white folks in, right? Hey, sad, but it's true. The The dissemination of the land and its people caused by the Zoxa cattle killing gave Gray the opportunity to stabilize the area. He extended the magistrate's role, introduced white immigrants, and allowed loyal black allies like the Mufingu, M-F-E-N-G-U, into the area. 
and German legionaries who had fought in the Crimean War were offered free passage for themselves and their families to Cape Town. So here's one white man that was sent to Cape South Africa, to Cape Town. When he got through, more and more whites was finding themselves in land-owning positions and leadership positions. And the people who've been on that land for millions of years failed. Right. And and, and how he came was with, he started off like they do everywhere else with the Christian missionaries. But the question is, and what people try to understand is, wow, man, what happened? How did they come with this white Jesus in the cross? We're going to get to that, though. And wound up running the whole planet. We get to that, but that's part of six thousand years. But we get to that in a minute, though. Okay, he extended the magistrate's role, introduced white immigrants, and allowed lower black allies like the Mufingu into the area. And German legionaries who had fought in the Crimean War were offered free passages for themselves and their families to Cape Town. However, most of these left to take part in the Indian Mutiny in 1857. Gray then recruited German peasants' families who were uh, dispersed among the colonists, with whom they intermarried, soon losing their culture distinctiveness, right? Right. Okay, so they came in, they losing their culture, right? The hard press Gruqua, G R I Q U A, under Adam Koch, K O K, were allowed to settle in Norman. Oh, no man's island. Oh, oh no, no man's land. They left Philippopolis towards the end of 1861. Then after an epic journey over the high Drakensburg, they settled in what is now known as East uh, Grotkwur Island. These measures were in accord with Gray's policy of integration and were influenced by a need to consolidate British CAF, CAF, K-A-F-F-R-A-R-I-A and to safeguard the route to the north from East London via Queenston. Look, these measures were in accord with Gray, Sir Gray's now policy of integration. Just like they integrated black folk first in the, well, no, it wasn't first. They, no, just like they integrated black folks in America, they integrated into Africa under that system. And they brought that system of integration to America. Same playbook. Same game. Wow, man. I'm going to go a little bit further. Let me get into some more stuff, though, on this topic. Right. As High Commissioner, Gray had certain powers of intervention beyond Cape borders, but British involvement was mainly confined to exhorting diplomatic influence over uh, cooperative Boer republics and black chieftains. Gray conclu- concluded that so long as the white communities in South Africa remained economically unstable and politically divided, They would be unable to make progress and there would be no end to the cycle of violence with their African neighbors. His solution was to establish one policy throughout South Africa. In in envisaging, which is E-N-V-I-S-A-G-I-N-G, this as a this as a single unified territory. He sought to reverse the policy of withdrawal laid down in the conventions of Sand River and Bloemfontein. Instead, he reasserted British authority north of the Vile River and actively tried to extend and consolidate imperial positions in a federal association. He wanted to bring under white rule the whole area across the key KEI right through to NATO and to persuade the Orange Free State to federate between the Cape Colony. At this time the free staters were suffering at the hands of the Basutu whose stronghold they had attacked without success. 
Soto Raiders had penetrated a wide area of the free state and the free state Volksrad had since then grown receptive to the idea of federating with the Cape Town. At this point, Gray seriously overreached himself, ignoring the more critical attitude towards colonial affairs held by British officials. In March 1859, Gray took advantage of distance and slow communications and without waiting to hear from London, laid his proposal for federation with the free states before the Cape legislation. This indiscretion incurred the wrath of his superiors at the British colonial office, who were already dismayed at the high cost of his undertakings and alarmed about the financial deficit building up at the Cape. British officials refused to countenance his federation schemes, and he was immediately recalled in 1859. Right. So he went over there. Right. And use the same playbook, integration, divide and conquer, you know, until he's saying, look, well, we know this was originally black land in Africa. But when I get through, whites will have the majority power and blacks will be subjugated to their rule. Wow. I mean, wow. Bro. All this is history. You can look it up, check it out. Now, Kamala Harris, right? They call her a person of color because she's a melanated person. Her mother, India, father, Jamaican, right? She will be pressed dealing with race on the Indian part of that caste system that they have. And the caste system is what they call the black, the darker skinned Indians with the straight hair. Y'all see them. They, they, I mean, they dog, 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 straight hair. They call them untouchables and they give them all the menial jobs and they treat them, uh, treat them like the lower at the bottom of the totem pole, right? Racism in Indy, right? All oh, this going to come out, right? But, uh, but it has to come out, right? Because you can't treat Original people who been there, who was cultivating lands and um, building uh, monuments and buildings and whatnot, you know, down the ancestral lines, and then bring in a people from a different continent and put them over them and expect the people to continue to be upbeat. And happy, they'll be depressed and wondering where did they best days go. This is not the land in which we once knew. Right. You know, man, I'm uh, the, 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 the police or the, any authority figures on the globe that deals with the indigenous people, they treat them harshly. Right. Because they feel like they have to because they know they occupy us. Right. And so they treat them harshly to uh, instinct fear in them, to keep them from wanting to rise up and say, hey, you know what? This is my land. My ancestors been on this land for years, and I'm not going to take this shit no more. So they got to keep on, keep on, keep doing little things, keep doing little things, you know, keep y'all guard, keep your balance. Uh, whether And then they know, okay, well, look, we're going to relegate them to um, to positions to where if they want to make any substantial amount of money, you're going to be an athlete, you're going to be an entertainer. But we'll control that too. As a matter of fact, we'll create the narrative on the type of um, frequency we want you to put the music out in, whether it's a low frequency. We want the low frequency. We want the low vibratory frequency of music to be delivered to the children. You know, We want to see two women grinding each other and then have the the, the the white girl as the madam. We're going to create that narrative. I mean, it's, it is what it is. It's just that, and it's just that how can we allow the same game to be played over and over and we don't catch all aspects of it, right? How can we allow to be used 
Because after you use, what happens when something's used? They find reasons to throw you away. You played yourself, but it's part of the game. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm just, it's part of the game. But so anyway, Sir George Gray statue was recently defaced uh, during the riots after the George Floyd killing in Octon, that A-U-C-K-T-O-N. And uh, people was like, well, you know, he wasn't really a bad guy. Do you see what he, did you did you see what he implemented in South Africa? Hell, that's where the, uh, he was. He created the atmosphere for apartheid. Wow. Anyway, research. Look it up. Um, oh yeah, before we go. Okay, so no dealing with only the Nick Cannon situation, right? Okay, check it. Cause I was listening to Professor Griff today. He was saying, look. He did, Professor Griff stated, he did that interview a year ago. Griff said, right after Minister Farrakhan put out his criterion message on July 4th, then here come Nick Cannon finally released that video, uh, that interview he did with Professor Griff. Right. Now, I could say, well, you know, Kamala Harris' uh, husband is is a Jewish guy. Right. So maybe uh, they knew that they were going to uh, vet her to be vice president and they set the whole thing up, you know, because they didn't want um, black people. They wanted to, they, they, because put it like this, the value of the black vote is valuable and the brown vote. And but it was black people who put that, that gave Joe Biden a nod for the vice presidency, you know? So, I don't know, man, but the whole situation just seems strange to me. That's all I'm saying. I'm not putting my thing on anything dealing with uh, Nick Cannon, Kamala Harris's fact that her husband is Jewish, Mr. Farrakhan and his uh, criterion message he gave July 4th, and Nick Cannon releasing that uh, interview he did with Professor Griff at that specific time which got Griff labeled as an anti-Semite. And Griff's is like, man, I'm, I, he, he's in the loss of words of what's going on. But was it a setup or is it it's part of the game, man? It's, it's wild. That's all I'm saying. It's just, it's, it's wild. But we'll continue to uh, bring you these uh, historical topics because we have to, because certain things has been going on too long. And we got to bring you um, information so you can vet for yourself and somebody out there that's listening. And I believe it'll be a listener from Verbal Pick Radio. But somebody's out there listening that's going to know how to break that cycle, right? That's going to know, okay, no, this is what happened. And we're going to, you know, we need to maneuver this way. We, because um, your future depends upon it. Your, your, your uh, validity as being depends upon it. Your justification for being on the planet depends upon it. Because if you let someone else write your narrative or write your story, they will easily write you out. Verbal Peak Radio, we're out.